<laughs> Welcome to a helicopter catch and cook. That's the one I've been looking for. Let's get back to the chopper. We're going to explore along this rugged remote coastline, bringing you guys with us. Let's let it go. We were told that there's certain islands and places that are protected because there's mammals on there that are endangered. We went and scouted around. A lot of places you could literally not land anyway because it's just so gnarly. So we started to look around, searching for some ground, and all of a sudden the second chopper just go straight under us. As we moved further down the coastline, it started to open up. Beautiful white sandy beaches, blue water, and the chopper pilot said to me, anywhere along here, we can land and we can go for a look at that giant bloody lobster that you're after. And we're gearing up for one hell of a send. All the gears in these cages on the side of the chopper, I will give you a little bit of a tour of the chopper a bit later on in the video, so hang around for that. But for now, I need to get in the water because I'm absolutely so excited. This is what I live for, exploring untouched remote ground. <sighs> so in the carry bag, I've got all my dive gear. It's got me fins, weight belt, mask. You on these youngbloods.co and I also bought the gun because there's a very high chance that there are some big fish lurking in the shallows here because it's just so untouched. So I'm very intrigued with that. That's so sick. <laughs> As I mentioned, I'm after a giant red lobster. Whoa, that was so much colder than home. So my theory is, because there haven't been much humans around here, all the lobsters will be seeking shelter in the shallow here, in the carpool, and up against the shore there. So I should be able to find, hopefully, a whole heap in this area. Fingers crossed for a big old giant lobby. It's a bit too small, but there's heaps of these under there. It's a good soul. I'll put him back. We'll get a bigger one. Well, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's getting bigger still they get heaps bigger than that and that's what we're after we'll keep looking this is so much fun i'm getting smashed on the rocks too Whoa. Ah, got it i just put my head in this typo here and was met by huge bulging groper we're living off whatever we catch out here through this trip so gonna get in and see if i can get a fish as well as a cray wish me luck straight on ice. We got the ice bag on the chopper there. Yes! That's so good. I'm gonna give you guys a little tour of the helicopter. Obviously I'm no expert, but I'll just show you inside and outside. Got the inside of the coffee here, all the little bells and whistles there. It's so comfy the ride over and I love looking through the bubble. It's a big glass bubble of destiny. Got the open windows there and the boys are sitting in the back. Pull out gear, dive gear, surfboards, fishing gear, whatever. It can all fit in there. It's like a full adventure chopper. I've always been fascinated by helicopters. Got the rotors up there, little exhaust. Got the inflatables on the legs here in case anything happens and we have to do an emergency landing in the water out there. And that's basically it. So you guys will notice that there's actually a huge rip and heat and turbulence running through here and along the coast. That's both good and bad. The good being, all the lobsters will be sitting there and they'll be waiting to feed. All this stuff brings nutrients down, all the algae and everything, and I'll just sit there going Wah. The bad side is though, if I get stuck in these rips out here and I can't grab onto anything, Literally, within a split second, I'll be on that dry reef in those breakers. And there's so many sharp rocks and shit around. But I love it, and I'll see you guys in the water. Wish me luck. Down. We're just going to pack up the rest of the gear and start sending it that way onto the next spot. We started sending it back exploring as we went. We're looking for a remote beautiful spot to light up a fire, spend the rest of the afternoon, cook up a hell feed and we had got our tucker for the rest of the week and we started gearing up, planning what we're gonna do, scoping out the maps and areas where we want to explore. And one thing's for damn sure, I cannot wait to taste this beautiful red lobster from Bolshin Groper. Let's get it. Just touched down in this spot along the coast here. We're gonna make a little fire here and get stuck straight into that cook. Some sort of seaweed or, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll do. A few more of them and we'll be sweet. <laughs> Collected some little sticks there. We bring a bit of wood of our own because we're trying to minimize how much we take from around the beaches and the land and stuff. So, Woo! here we go. Yeah. We got fire, baby. Woo!
I'm just gonna fill it up this ball shin groper. You can tell it's a ball shin groper by the big white shin, the really ugly teeth there, but they serve a purpose. These ball shin gropers, they eat things like urchins, you know, the spiky things, they grab them, flip them over and get into them. Crabs, crayfish, they also eat squid and all that kind of stuff. The big difference between this fish and a lot of other fish is the huge scales on them. So when you're filleting, the first few cuts are actually quite annoying to get some soft, soft meat up along the front there because there's all meat up there like all the other fish down there and the same thing we're just sort of doing an outline you want a super sharp knife you can scale the fish but we like to leave them on along there back of the fish this is a bit of a personal choice you can turn the fish around and outline it on the belly there and up or you can do it this way once you've got a good grip on it up the front here and you have cleared it past the sort of ribs there to the middle of the fish you want to go up and start cutting down like that. And then you can actually poke your knife through and then work your way back like that. And you go over those ribs and you slice it all out. Ah, pin bones, beautiful fillet of fresh bolshing groper. I just want to show you one last thing. If you go down on the skeleton of the fish, you'll notice that it's blue. Fish of this species, most of them have that blue lining on their skeleton. Look at the size of the scale. Little trick I developed, they put a little finger size slit in the back there to get my finger through. And just behind it, I'll start the cut, like that. You wanna push the blade down and flatten it out as best you can. And with leverage, it's quite hard to do a full fillet. Down like that. Oh. There we go. Just like that. Remember that little finger hole is good. Not all fish, but most fish you can do that. Bones out of it. Straight down the middle there. The other side out. That's all nasty. I'm just gonna slice this into, into pieces about this size. Just like that. A little bit of butter, a little bit of oil maybe, salt and pepper. <sighs> Give myself a wild dad bod here. Jacko's just gonna slice it down the tail there, all the way through, split it in half. We have already put this crate to sleep. It has been dealt with humanely. It is completely dead and does not feel any pain right now. There we go. Oh, beautiful, nice and full. Nice work, Jacko, the dead bod. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that, it's from a whale. Yeah. That's a good plate. Oh. Get ready for that one, that one's coming. That's a wrap, baby. Oh, there's a bird there. <coughs>